an entrance. Oh my gosh, besides the fact that we... About you nearly sleep. <laughs> sleep. You nearly sleep, but that would have right. been great. Right, well at least you know I'm human, we do make you, mistakes, you right? Do. Everyone makes mistakes yes, and you do. are human and we are... Oh, we're going to slide in. Slide in. Slide in. I was going to actually pull away from you at first. Well, the good thing is if you slipped, it would have just been broadcast because we are live, guys. Um, and we are going to be taking questions for your new Miss USA, Kyra. I'm so excited you're here. Thank you. I'm happy to be here. It's thrilling because you were just given the title on Sunday. So you've only had a few days to really marinate everything that's going on. Yes. So first obvious question, how are you feeling? Just, I mean, so overwhelmed. I'm extremely thankful for this opportunity, and it still really hasn't sunk in yet. But wow, this is amazing, right? Are you sleeping? <laughs> yeah, you know, I'm, I'm getting a good couple of hours of sleep at night. Does it look like I'm not or something? No, you look... I think look, she's trying to tell me something. You look beautiful, <laughs> and I know how busy you've Thank been. You. So is it just feeling like super surreal, like you're living in a dreamland? It is. It definitely is. It is surreal. I mean, like, I walked to Times Square last night just trying to have some fun, and I came back, I'm like, wait. I gotta be up at 5 a.m. tomorrow for hair and makeup. So it's, it's just it's just like a great opportunity. I'm just extremely thankful for it. Absolutely. <laughs> and I did watch when you were crowned, and I told you off camera, I teared up a little bit seeing the bond between you and Deshauna because this is the second year that Miss DC has taken the crown, something that you were told couldn't be done. Yes, exactly. So word of advice, there's always going to be naysayers and critics, but it's what Haters you do. Haters are motivators, okay? right? Okay, it's what you do and believe in yourself, so that's what it's all about. And what was that feeling like when the crown was put on your head? I saw the tears flowing, mm -hmm. I myself was just like getting all teared up. What were you feeling in that exact moment? I mean, even before the crowning, I closed my eyes, held hands with Chavi, you know, Miss New Jersey, and I just started praying. I just said, God, like, guide me. If this is for me, it's for me. Like, no matter what happens, life goes on. And then when they said District of Columbia, the first thing that came to my mind was, is this really my life? Like, what am I supposed to do next? So, I mean, just that entire feeling of just like, just like excitement, like anxiety coming down. It's just something that I've never felt before. Mm -hmm. And I'm thankful for it. What was the first thing Deshauna said to you when you got off stage? Oh my goodness, I can't even remember. But I it would think, have been a blast. <laughs> I, I, I believe more so her words were conveyed through just her actions. If you saw her jumping up and down on the stage, you would have thought she just caught the Holy Spirit, right? <laughs> yes, like we were in church praising at that moment, so yeah. It was an amazing moment, and I do kind of want to address the pink elephant, which was the Q&A. You did cop a lot of heat on social media, so I just want to give you a chance to kind of clarify your comments on healthcare and feminism. Do you think that healthcare is in fact a privilege and not a right? Right, you know, at first I want to say thank you for the opportunity to clarify. Uh, that's the beauty of America. We are given that opportunity, right? And to clarify on that point, healthcare for me is a privilege. I am privileged to have healthcare. I don't take any of that for granted. Mm -hmm. And do I feel as if affordable healthcare, which the question was asked, affordable healthcare is a right for all? I do believe affordable healthcare should be a right for people around the world. And I believe that the vehicle to affordable healthcare are jobs. Mm -hmm. I, I, I totally believe that only because of the conversation I have with people around DC that have been on these type of systems and they say, hey, I would like a job. Mm -hmm. And as for, you asked me about the feminism one too, right? Yes. Yeah, so, I mean, you did say you believed in equalism, but feminism by definition is the fact that men and women are equal. You're right. So, with that definition, you are a feminist? Well, like I said, I like to use the term equalist. Yeah, I like that I, too. Yeah, you know, I just, uh, I'm all about women's rights. I just wanted to use a different term. At times, you know, it, it's a very subjective word. So when people hear that, it, it has so many different meanings to different generations, mm -hmm. like so many different people around the world. I mean, gender is just like groups in general. So I figured I'd use something that I believe in my own manner that didn't really carry a negative connotation, mm -hmm. connotation and use equalism. Well, you are a badass female. I mean, you're a scientist, Thank girlfriend. <laughs> so I love that you said you want to use your platform to inspire kids to get involved in the STEM industry because especially women are so underrepresented in that field. So what do you want to do to help them do that? There's so many things. So I'm hoping to really expand my self-funded actually um, community outreach project called Science Exploration for Kids. 
So on top of going to the schools and doing projects, I want to continue to do that around the New York area as well as just domestically around the United States. Mm -hmm. I want to continue to possibly go to high schools and do symposiums where we introduce these career paths to so many students, whether it I means you know, both men and women, but especially women. We are underrepresented. And I believe that we deserve so much opportunity when it comes to like education, and especially in like the STEM fields. Absolutely. What inspired you to enter that field? Okay, so it is like a three thirty part answer, right? <laughs> uh, I struggle with math as a as an adolescent, yeah, right? Well, okay, me too. So, me too, girlfriend. I got it. Phenomenal eighth grade math teacher really broke everything down for me systematically. I now use her techniques to help so many um, students um, with like their tutoring. Um, I knew I was good at chemistry. I enjoyed the class, and again, my eighth, I mean, my eleventh grade chemistry teacher. Amazing, Mrs. Dupont. She knows it. Like hey, I, Mrs. I Dupont. love exactly. Love I love it. this woman. <laughs> she really was honest about chemistry as well. And then I took AP chemistry my senior year. And my teacher was honest. She said it's hard. Like mm -hmm. be careful. And and she was right. I went into it. I dove into it head first. But I realized I fell in love with just the the part of my my brain just being able to be used dynamically. Wow. And that's why I went to the field. And then like looking hindsight, I'm like, wow, it's scholarship money, yep. internship money, experience. I'm like, this is the place to be. This is the place of opportunity. Word, opportunity, I love that. So before this, what was your day-to-day -day life like as a scientist? Is it what I think, like a lab coat walking around with test tubes? Or am I stereotyping completely? You are. Yeah. <laughs> right. I right. have to ask. I right. have to ask. <laughs> no, but I appreciate that. You know, so here to clarify again, yes. right? But prior to working, I have been like, uh, excuse me, at my agency right now, I have been in the lab coat setting. That's in the laboratory during mm -hmm. my internships. But working at the Nuclear Regulatory Commission, it's all about regulatory compliance. Therefore, we make sure these plants are operating safe. We right. make sure that their standards that they say they need to live up to are actually what they're living up to. And that's essentially what I do. So I mean, if I could really like reenact what I do on a daily basis, you would see someone waking up like, you know, 6.30, 5.30 some days, Ooh. cooking breakfast, sipping on some tea in the morning, <laughs> just trying to really assess life. You're just an average girl, but, right? Yeah, yeah, just put on some khakis. It's like I wear, I get very fashionable by work, <laughs> right? Read the newspaper upside down. Do you wear Crocs as well? I, have, and Crocs? I actually have like generic Crocs. I don't, I don't have any real Crocs. I have the Kmart brand ones. <laughs> That's amazing. Now, I read that you actually were going to ask your supervisor about taking the year off. Right. Did you do that yet? He's actually on leave right now. Oh. So I was able to get some kind of concurrence from him through like um, email and such like that. So we're going to discuss that verbally over the phone. And hopefully I can um, even see them soon in person. But, I mean, the entire agency is so supportive. Yeah. Okay, it's if amazing. I didn't win, I don't know what, what things would have been like if I went back to work. But, I mean, I'm so thankful for everyone at the agency. I'm thankful for the opportunity to really to really still stand strong in what it is I want to do without feeling as if I'm being objectified. So, everyone at the agency is amazing. The opportunity is great. And I really appreciate the diversity and inclusion that they, that they are offering me as well. Absolutely. Everyone is proud of you, the whole country. But your weekend, what are you most excited about? This weekend or? I'm no, sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> You're a weekend of the oh. rain. Oh, so, yes. what about being Miss USA? is the most exciting to you? I, I mean, especially going to all these events, but I'm just really hoping to be impacted by so many people. You know, most people say, oh, I want to reach out to other people, but I believe that the only way you can really reach out to someone else, if you find just that, that connection, that mm -hmm. innate connection, and I'm just hoping to just be touched by so many people, whether it's children, finding that aha moment in yeah. science, whether it's that young girl that messaged me saying, I adore you, I want to go into nuclear chemistry now, like how do you do this, like that's what I want to see. I want to see so much feedback that people are being encouraged to really step out of their comfort zones because I'll let you know now, I mean, what I'm wearing, you would have never seen me in this. Like, <laughs> you look beautiful. Thank you, <laughs> extremely shy my entire life, just not really having any like girth to say, you know, I really want to do this. And like all that changed when I got to college, I said no more living with the what if, do what you want Kyra. I love that. And Thank speaking you. of that impact, I asked Ashauna this same question and I think it's an important one for every Miss USA. What do you want to be remembered for at the end of the reign? Right. I mean, exactly what I just said, right? Mm. Knowing that, hey, this person, this one, this young lady, someone found hope through some of their trials and tribulations. Someone found courage to really go out there, go out there what they want. Someone found courage to say, you know, I don't live with this what if. Someone found courage to say, although I struggle with math, I'm going to make sure I get through this. And that's what I want to see. I just want to see so many people be encouraged and seeing like, 
um, representations that they hope to really like emulate one day. And that's really it. I just want to be the best person possible. Encourage and inspire. Yep. I love that. I hope you're all taking notes if you're watching. And we have been watching your questions, so it might be a good time to see what's going on. We've got Hunter Lazy behind the lens. What have we got going on? <laughs> uh, so a lot of people want to know how you're going to start preparing for Miss Universe. Ooh. Right, so right now we're on like a very steady road. Um, Miss Universe is going to be between November and January. But when all that really comes full swing after like media week, it's just, it's just going to be like me being very abreast on topics that are going on globally, not just domestically. Mm -hmm. Of course, I'm going to be in the gym, you know, <laughs> like Fergie, you yeah. know, working on my fitness. <laughs> and, hang on, you said yeah. you had a burger before you came here. <laughs> It's the diet starts tomorrow, right? <laughs> it's something called tricking your diet. You cannot always eat greens. Like, you need protein, okay, guys? We're humans. <laughs> no, I but, love that. Yeah, but honestly, it's just about being prepared, like, mentally as well. So I'm going to make sure I'm really honing in on always staying healthy, taking my vitamins, getting my rest, and really actually speaking out when I know maybe I'm spent. Right. That's going to be definitely a part of the, uh, my preparation for Miss Universe, which I'm going to, and I just remembered. So thank you for reminding me. Oh, <laughs> we're crossing our fingers for you. We really thank are. Thank you. Who's your favorite Miss USA? Ooh. Wow. I mean, without a doubt, you know Deshauna Barber. That's yes. my friend, my sister. That's my queen. I look at her. I'm like, wow, she's a captain in the military. My mother was in the Navy. I see firsthand the stereotype she broke. And the thing about it is Deshauna and I competed together twice. Wow. So Deshauna is my favorite Miss USA because, for one, when she and I competed, she had won the interview portion but didn't make top five. But, but she knew she could win Miss DC and be Miss USA. And she never backed down from that. So that's why I appreciate first just her, her tenacity. I appreciate her just being an honest person and her gen like just being genuine. She truly is just like a marvelous person and she's broke stereotypes worldwide. She's mm -hmm. even given myself a light. So I'm thankful to be in this position as well as Miss USA to speak on issues that are dear to my heart. Wow, well said, well said. Hey Emily, I really appreciate that question and to answer your question, absolutely. <laughs> that is what my Miss USA reign is going to be based on. So I'm going to continue to work towards my project called Science Exploration for Kids. And I'm really hoping to expand it around the New York area as well as just domestically around America. And I, you know, if there's anything, if you have any more questions or something you're curious about when it comes to career opportunities, please send me a message. I would like to tag, you know, my personal Instagram as well so you can get in touch with me quicker so we can all talk about these opportunities. Hell yeah. Love it. Any more questions? We might have time for one before we move into the game. One more question! Yeah. Um, is the crown heavy? Yes! Is the right. crown heavy? Honestly, it's not. It's not heavy? It's not. It's not at all. Was I mean, it hard to stay on? No, it fits perfectly, and that's what I'm thankful for, because I have a very funny-shaped little head, so so if I can get hats or anything to fit me, I'm grateful. Headbands. I can't wear headbands, so don't buy me any headbands. That's hilarious. Right. Yeah, but if you ever see me outside and you're curious, hey, we'll, we'll put our hands out like this, and we'll do, you know, we'll do the test, because it's not at all. Wow, mm -hmm. I expected it to be, because it looks so grand on right. camera and heavy. If I could break down the science for you, you know what it's made out of, the density, but that's a topic for <laughs> so just know it's good quality. It's a good quality crown and you wore it well and Thank you're wearing you. it well. Thank you. You have very similar traits to Dushona. She's you definitely cool. do. You're both super inspiring and motivated, Thank which you. is exactly what we need for our Miss USA. Thank you. But we're going to see how much both of us know about science. I flunked it. <laughs> so you're not going to look bad next to me. We are going to be playing a quiz for you live and we want you to play along as well at home. It's a simple game of true or false. So we've got a 50-50 shot. 50 50-50. We'll see how we go. We have some paddle boards. Do we have the paddle boards? Um, just so, because otherwise I would copy you. Because oh. <laughs> I don't know. I'm very nervous. Oh, paddle boards. Yes, I love it. Ooh. Thank you, Mimi. Do you want red or black? Let's do black. Okay. There's your paddle board. So we put true. I'm sorry. Well, let's just do T or oh, F. Oh, we're writing it. Yeah. Okay. I thought really. So like... that's easier. So T okay. or F. Does that work better? <laughs> just because, yeah. And we got some tissues. Right. All right. <laughs> I love that. Okay. Right. All right. I won't. I won't look at. I won't look either. Go ahead, Hunter. What do we got? Right. I'm nervous. Five. If you drilled a tunnel straight through the earth and jumped in, would you 
It would take Kiro exactly four hours and 32 minutes to get to the other side. True or false? The other side of the planet? Yes. Four hours and 37 minutes? If you dig a tunnel straight through and jump in. Sorry, a, a tunnel straight through where? Straight through the Earth's crust to the other side. Oh, is that even really? possible? Or is it, this is definitely a hypothetical? <laughs> okay, um, at least, come on. I, I mean... The answer is false. Okay. Yes! Yay! We're okay, like, thank can God. we take it I thought deep? maybe this would be a trick question. <laughs> it would only yeah. take you 42 minutes, though. What? 42 <laughs> minutes? Wow, mind blowing. That's insane. But I thought we didn't even have drills, like, tough enough. Whatever. I don't think so. I okay, <laughs> we, we got the answer right. Sorry, we got it. Don't okay. ever second doubt yourself. If you, if you have the first answer right, I'm, I'm giving you test advice. Do not change your answer. Yes, go with your gut instincts. Yes. They're hardly wrong. Question number two. There's enough DNA in an average person's body to stretch from the sun to Pluto and back 17 times. DNA? Oh, shivers. The answer is true. Yay. Oh my god, two for <laughs> two! Yes! <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm a scientist too. Yeah. <laughs> We're gonna get her honorary degree after this, okay? <laughs> yes! This is awesome. Alright, you guys ready for number yes. three? Gorillas and potatoes have two more chromosomes than humans do. Humans? Wait, gorillas and potatoes? Potatoes? Potatoes don't have chromosomes. Right. <laughs> I thought he said potatoes. You said gorillas <laughs> and potatoes. He did say potatoes. Have two more chromosomes than humans do. What? I'm pretty I... sure a potato is in a chromosome. <laughs> the answer is true. Right? What? Wait, explain this potato. Potato. Yeah. Is, 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 is that a gorilla? <laughs> maybe, maybe that's a type of monkey or something like a primate. I, I don't get it. <laughs> Potatoes have chromosomes. Okay. Wow. My so, blown. So potatoes have a certain. Never mind. We'll, we will talk about this later. Yeah. Well, this will this discussion okay. can be finished. Well, after. we know the answer now. Wow. Don't doubt a potato. <laughs> it's got some chromosomes <laughs> and shit. That's crazy. <laughs> All right, guys. Here comes number four. Yep. The air in an average-sized room weighs about one hundred pounds. Pounds? It doesn't weigh anything. Yes, it does. I can't change my answer. Wait, the air in a room? The air in an average sized room is about 100 pounds. <laughs> I don't know what average size is. I don't know the altitude. Look at Jane smiling. He did these questions. It's so hard. <laughs> I don't even know. It's crazy. I was thinking of more like, like pounds, sun round. Pounds, but it's not pounds though. Isn't like a different unit of mass? <laughs> Hunter, fun fact, isn't a scientist. <laughs> Wait, the internet? It's true. I knew oh, it. Oh damn. my gosh, I just second guessed myself. You did. You I know, did. your first instinct was true. That's See, all right. Lesson like, learned again, y'all. Lesson learned. Listen to your gut. We are learning this very quickly. But pounds? Okay. I'm sweating. This is a hard game. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> whoo. Oh gosh. A cumulus cloud? There's different types of clouds? Sirius, something else. In, I know Sirius clouds. Wait. There's water in them. <laughs> when in doubt, pick F. We are waiting to get... Yep, there we go. So I'm going to repeat it again for everyone watching. A medium-sized cumulus cloud <laughs> about the same as 80 elephants. The answer is true. Yeah! Oh, well, you, there you go. There you go. Nice There's job. There's like water in I it. didn't know that there were different types of clouds. There's three different types. Wow, I'm mm -hmm. learning a lot today. <laughs> she just, skipped, she just skipped all the way through. Yeah. Like, <laughs> she's too smart for this. <laughs> all right, guys, number six. On Saturn, it snows metal. Two types have been found, and they're called Selena and Bismuthanite. Oh, <laughs> what? <laughs> I love Saturn. It's the prettiest planet. It has nice accessories. It rains metal. metal. On Saturn, it snows metal. Two types of metal, oh. and they're called Selena and Bismuthanite. <laughs> Bismuthanite. <laughs> Word of the day. Yes. Extra points if you can spell it. B I S M I T H I N T E. N I T E. 
in. Jeez. That was really good. Thank I, you. This that was, was a nice. Are you sure that it's Saturn? He said Saturn, right? Yeah, this one's tricky. This is the one. Wait. That, this is your least favorite one that you get in school. Fall, it snows these metals on Venus, not Saturn. Oh. Okay. That was a trick question. What? Exactly. <laughs> James, we'll talk after this, all right? <laughs> Oh We're my gonna God. give him a test afterwards. Yes, yeah, wow. right. We'll switch places. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> it's not open book either, so. <laughs> All right, number seven. At over 2,000 kilometers, that's 1,400 miles long, the Great Barrier Reef is the largest living structure on Earth. My Great Wait, Barrier this reef. might be the same thing. Is this the, a different reef? I hope it's not another trick question, Hunter. Where is that located? That's one thing I don't oh, know. Great Barrier Reef in Australia. Got it. Thank you. <laughs> All right. So, right? Yes. Okay. <laughs> That's not fair. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Oh, I don't know anything about it. I don't know anything about anything. <laughs> so is this true? That answer is true. Great. Woo! It just, I mean, I think like the words, like Great Barrier. You know? Great Barrier Reef. It's just, beautiful and it's dying, so you should go see it if you can. I'm trying to. The coral reef is really, it's and, sad. And if I could like hone in on another science tip as well, like you have to use the, the clues around you. That's yes. what I teach students when I'm tutoring them. So Great Barrier. I think that answer would be true. You know how far away right. it is? All right, great. Let's yes, go. Thank Sorry. You go. The answer's always in front of you. Yes. Good lesson. <laughs> yeah. Okay, number eight. Oh, we must. Human saliva contains Ew. a painkiller called that is six times more powerful than morphine. Yeah, right. I would have been <laughs> sucking on saliva for a long time if that were true. Human <laughs> saliva contains a painkiller called opiorphin that is six times more powerful than morphine. Opiorphin. Well, opiorphin. Or opiorphin. I've never even heard of that term, so we're just going to go with guts. I bet you it's true, too. And, oh, oh I, of you, course, yes. I'm, not, I'm not living up to my expectations. No, my you're own. doing well. You're beating me. You're doing really well. These are hard questions. Like, stronger than Warfy, but okay. I don't we'll know. Go. This is fun. Thank you. Thank I'm gosh, it's 50 50. That's all I'm going to say. Yes. Thank God. I thought you said we could phone a friend. I know. We, could phone. <laughs> we have a phone. I wouldn't know any friend that would know anybody. Any of these okay. <laughs> Who would you call in this instance if you could then? ET. ET. <laughs> ET phone home. <laughs> Oh, question. thank God. The strongest creatures on Earth are ants. They can pull 100,000 times their own body weight. Well, I can crush them with a finger. 1,000 so. times? <laughs> are you guys? That is false. Oh, damn, I need to hear too. I just thought it was... The strongest creature are gonorrhea bacteria. What? That's what a creature is a disease. Wait, read, read the question again? It should have been insect. The strongest creature <laughs> the gonorrhea. Is gonorrhea, but the strongest creature actually is the gonorrhea bacteria. That's this, this is bacteria is not a creature. Is <laughs> I don't know. They have an amoeba. <laughs> this is bizarro. I'm ready for this last question, though. It's going to be very stressful. It's like I would like a, a, a retake. <laughs> Let's start this again. If only we went live, right? <laughs> and a little down home fact for yourself. OK. Wait, this is Billy biased. goat plum is not a real fruit. No, I've never had a Billy goat plum. I would remember I it. I love jackfruit though. What's jackfruit? Wait, isn't it Australia? I don't think so. I don't really eat fruit though, so I'm oh, not the best. No, it's, <laughs> it's like a meat substitute. A meat substitute that's a fruit? It's called jackfruit. Jackfruit? Yeah. No, but I will want to try yeah. that. It's amazing. Wait, do you mind repeating that question <laughs> for comprehension, please? The Australian Billy goat plum contains 100 times more vitamins. A Billy Goat what? Plum. Plum. I've never heard of that. I'm a bad Australian. I'm gonna, I'm gonna answer one right. Girl, it's true. Yay. Oh, there we go. You won. There you go, Carol. My gut Honestly. instinct, finally. Well, that was an amazing On the test. last question. You did a really good job. It was really hard. Thank God it was yeah. only true or false. So. Thank you for these for these amazing science challenging questions. It's uh, nice to get your brain moving around. It's like a yes. muscle. You need to exercise it. I actually really feel like I just like ran a mile. Yeah. I'm exhausted. Wow. We need to take a nap. <laughs> Uh, before we do, I want to give you a chance to kind of address your audience and your fans who are watching if you want to say anything to them. It's honestly been an honor to have you in here. 
So, hello all, this is Kyra McCullough of Miss USA 2017. I am on Now This, and this was the awesome, one of the most greatest interviews I've had thus yes. far. These people are so cool. Thank you for the questions. Thank you for listening in. Shout out to the District of Columbia, the Yo. DMV in general. <laughs> Shout out to my hometown, Virginia Beach. Shout out to my new home, New York City. I'm so glad to be here. And hey, continue to watch Now This. Yes, let's dance out. That was oh, awesome. Yeah. Are we through that?